Our next case is Sherwood versus Walker. This is a very prominent first year law school case. It's the Cow case, commonly known as the Cow case. And the first question is, what is replevin? Replevin is very key in this case, and uh, it starts off by talking about replevin for a cow. Basically, replevin is recovery. The plaintiff in this particular lawsuit wanted to recover a cow. This is the year of 1887, and we're talking about uh, bovine recovery. Okay, now, state the facts. And you may respond accordingly by saying something like this. This is a case involving a particular cow which had a name. The cow's name was Rose the Second of Abalone. Very famous cow name, Rose the Second of Abalone. And the situation was a buyer wanted to obtain the cow because the buyer and the seller both believed that this cow was barren. They believed that this cow could not reproduce. And there was an agreed upon price uh, for this particular cow. Uh, as it turned out, the cow was not barren. The cow, in fact, uh, shortly after uh, the, the uh, transaction was completed, the cow was found to have been with calf. So uh, after the uh, discovery was made, the seller refused to transfer the cow to the buyer. And that was the nature of the dispute. Next question, what is rescission? Rescission is a very important concept in uh, contract law. And this is one of your introductions to that concept. And basically, rescission is rescinding. Uh, it is a situation in which one party wants to sit, rescind or basically cancel the contract and say that uh, you know we don't want to proceed with this contract any longer. Now, in this particular case, there was a, um, a series of um, written documents which were evidence of this particular agreement. So there was no dispute about the fact that um, there, there was a sale. The question was, what was the understanding of the parties pertaining this, to this particular uh, cow? What was, the, what was the understanding of both the buyer and the seller pertaining to uh, the subject matter of the contract? And, and that's, it's important for you to understand that when you're, when you're reading these cases and when you're going through the law, uh, these cases are used because they are models for general principles of law. And it is important for you to, for you to understand that uh, although in this particular case we're talking about a cow, uh, and there's a, a little bit of humor in this particular case, and uh, you know obviously Hiram Walker is a Hiram Walker and Sons uh, are famous name, and they're mentioned prominently in this case. Uh, it's just an example for you to understand the workings of the law, to understand uh, how the law works in certain situations. And in this case, the example that we're using is a cow. Now the understanding of the parties, both buyer and the seller, was that this cow was barren. The nature of the subject matter was barren cow, not breeding cow. And that's important because a breeding cow is substantially more valuable than a barren cow. In this particular case, a, uh, the, the uh, a barren, this cow, as a, as a barren cow, is worth $80. That's $80 in 1887 money, which is a lot more now. And if not barren, it would be worth between $750 to $1,000. So you see that there's a substantial difference in value between a barren cow and a breeding cow. So we look now to answer this next question. Who made the mistake, the buyer or the seller? Very interesting question. Um, and the answer is essentially, it was a mutual mistake. A mutual mistake. Both the buyer and the seller made the same mistake or had the, had the, same, had the same mistaken belief about the cow. Both the buyer and the seller believed that this cow could not breed and was barren. In the view of the court, to what extent did the mistake affect the agreement? Now that's basically the, uh, the, the gist of this particular decision. 
and uh, goes to the point of, of why this case is important. And here's what the, the, the court said that uh, basically, I'm of the opinion that uh, this entire contract was based upon a mistake of material fact. And the court says this, if there is a difference or misapprehension as to the substance of the thing bargained for, the substance of the thing bargained for, if the thing actually delivered or received is different in substance from the thing bargained for and intended to be sold, then there is no contract. But if it be only a difference in some quality or accident, even though the mistake may, be, may have been the actu actuating motive to the purchaser or the seller, or both of them, yet the contract remains binding. And the court goes on to say that uh, if the mutual mistake has simply related to the fact whether she was with calf or, or not for one season, then it might have been a good sale. But the mistake in this particular case affected the character of the animal for all time and for its present and ultimate use. She was not, in fact, the animal or the kind of animal the defendants intended to sell or the plaintiff intended to buy. She was not a barren cow. And if this fact had been known, there would have been no contract. The mistake affected the substance of the whole consideration, and it must be considered that there was no contract to sell or sale of the cow as she actually was. The thing sold and bought had, in fact, no existence. And that was the court's decision. And basically, the court said this court, this court allowed the rescission for that very reason. 